Good, Good morning. We welcome everybody here who's here physically and those who have joined us virtually for our annual district spelling bee. Uh, we congratulate in advance our participants who have made it thus far, and we hope that the participants are ready and ready to give us some great, exciting spelling on today. Uh, we will follow the program as printed if you all have one, uh, and we will go from there. This time we will have our announcement, Mr. Shepard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is truly a delight to be here this morning. We have with us Hale County School Super Spellers, and I am truly overjoyed to be here among all of this intelligence. It's kind of making me feel smart. You know? <laughs> um, we have. Um, we're proud of you, and we want you to know that we are very proud of you. Okay. All right. Uh, before I begin with the. Um, pronunciations, we, we, we've got some other things that we've got to do. First of all, we will have each of you to come to the microphone and state your name, the school that you represent, and what grade you're in. It's your name, the school that you represent, and what grade you're in. Uh, speak clearly and with full volume so that the judges can hear you and, and understand what you're saying. You may be asked to repeat yourself if we, the judges, if we, the judges, um, don't understand you. You will have to pull your face mask down in order to speak when you come to the microphone. Okay? All right, so contestant number one, will you come up, please, and give us your name, the school you represent, and what grade you're in. Take your mic, take your mask down. My name is Avon McGuffey. I, I represent Greensboro Elementary School, and I'm in fourth grade. All right. <laughs> Contestant number two. My name is Alexis Williams. I represent Mountville Elementary School, and I'm in fifth grade. All right. <laughs> Contestant number three. My name is Bradley Butler. Um, I represent Hill County Middle School, and I'm a senior student. We need you to We need you to speak fully all the way through. Okay. Before we move forward, we're going to have Ms. Um, Cheryl Thomas to come and give us the spelling bee procedures. Good morning, Hale County Schools, and good morning, Super Spellers. Uh, we're excited to have you here today, and my role today is to ensure that we clearly understand the rules of this spelling B. All right, I want you to listen clearly the pronouncer's role. The pronouncer strives to pronounce the words according to a diacritical marking in the 2021 SNB word list. The judges role. The judges uphold the rules and determine whether or not words are spelled correctly. They also render final decisions. They are in complete control of the competition, and their decision is final on all questions. Let's talk about the speller. First, 
thing I want to talk about is a disqualification rule. Disqualifications for reasons other than errors in spelling. The judges will disqualify a speller who refuses to start spelling when, there's, when, the, when it, there is a request. The judge can also disqualify a speller who does not approach the microphone when it is time to receive the word. A judge may disqualify a speller who engages in unsportsmanlike conduct. A judge may disqualify a speller who in the process of spelling utters unintelligible or nonsense sounds. The judges may not disqualify a speller for failing to pronounce the word either before or after spelling it. A judge may not disqualify a speller for asking a question, for not noting or failing to note the capitalization of a word, hyphens, spacing, or compounds. The speller's role. This is important. In a spelling grammar, the speller makes an effort to face the judges and pronounce the word for the judges before. Sorry for those technical difficulties. I'll start again. The speller's role. This is your role. In a spelling round, the speller, speller makes an effort to face the judges and pronounce the word for the judges before spelling it and after spelling it. The speller, while facing the judges, makes an effort to utter each letter distinctly and with sufficient volume to be understood by the judges. The speller may ask the pronouncer to say the word. The speller may ask their pronouncer to say the word again, define it, use it in a sentence, provide the parts of speech, provide the language origin, and provide an alternate pronunciation. Let's talk about the end of the B procedure. If a speller in a round misspells a word incorrectly, if none of the spellers remaining in the spelling bee at the start of the round spells a word correctly, all remain in the competition and a new spelling round begins. This is in the event of a tie. All spellers eliminated in the same round are tied for the same place. After the champion has been determined, the spelling bee officials or judges may opt to conduct 
what is called a tiebreaker so that we can determine the awarding of prizes for the rest of the qualified spellers. If any one speller in a spelling round correctly spells correctly, if only one speller spells correctly in a round, a new one word spelling round begins and the speller is given an opportunity to spell a word on the list. If the speller succeeds in correctly spelling the anticipated championship round word in this one word round, the speller is then declared the champion. If a speller, this is very important, misspells the anticipated championship word in a one word round. A new spelling round begins with all the spellers who participated in the previous round. Are there any questions? Thank you. All right, now that we have all the rules down, I hope we have no questions as, to, as we move forward. Before the practice round, each of, uh, before I do that, I want to thank our judges for uh, giving up their time today. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Sharon White, who is a counselor at Greensboro High School. We have uh, Mrs. Kelly Brown, who's the counselor at Dale County High School. We have Ms. Monica Bates, who is here at the College and Career Academy as our uh, JAG instructor. And our alternate judge is Dr. Robert Stewart. He's like over everybody else, so he'll be watching y'all. Okay. Um, and we thank you all for your time and effort. We know that you are here because you love our kids. Um, we. Um, before we begin with the practice round, each of you will be given the same word to spell, and it will not be recorded as being correct or incorrect. Then we will have a practice round where each of you will be given a word, and although you will be told if it is correct or incorrect, it will not disqualify you from the competition. It is only a practice round. Do any of you have any questions? If you do not at this time, I'd like for you to come to the mic uh, as I call your number and state your name and say, I understand. Okay, contestant number three. Say your name, did you understand what I said? Okay, do you need me to repeat it again? And I understand. I don't understand. Okay. They need to hear you. Okay? I need you to go to the mic and say it so that they can hear you. Probably but we're not understanding. Okay. Contestant number two. Alexis Williams and I understand. And contestant number one. Ava McGuffey and I understand. Okay. Now, I will now ask you to come back to the um, microphone as I call your number and spell the word parchment. Contestant number one. Parchment. Parchment. P-A-R-C-H-M-E-N-T. Parchment. Contestant number two. Parchment. P A R C A H M E N T. Parchment. Did you hear her? Ladies. You need to speak out. Make sure that you speak out so that the judges can hear you. Parchment. P A R C H M E N T. 
Parchment. Okay. Contestant number three, parchment. Parchment. P A R C H M E N T. Okay. Contestant number three. You're going to have to speak, so don't look at me. It doesn't matter about me. I'm just calling the word. But those ladies down there, they're the ones that must hear you. So can I have you to come back and spell parchment again, please? Parchment. P-A-R-C-H-M-E-N-T. Very good. Now we begin with our practice round. As I said earlier, during the practice round, you will each be given a word. And although you will be told if it is correct or incorrect, it will not disqualify you from the competition. Please wait for the judges to answer before you sit down. Okay? Contestant number one. This is practice round. Offspring. Offspring. O F F S P R I N G. Offspring. You didn't wait for the judge. Come back uh -huh. and wait for them to say. And you may be seated. Contestant number two. Fester. Fester. F E. S T E R Festival. Contestant number three. Purpose. Purpose. P U R P O S E. Okay, you should be kind of more comfortable in coming to the mic. Uh, if you touch the mic, please uh, re re uh, come to Mr. Rhymes. You gonna wipe the mic? Okay. Between rounds. Okay. Okay, round one. Contestant number one. Discord. Discord. D I S C O R D. Discord. Contestant number two. Fountain. Fountain. F O U T A R N. Fountain. You may be seated. Contestant number three. Schedule. At this time, we um, thank our super speller, not contestant number two, for participating. And we uh, ask that if you would take a um, seat in the audience. But thank you so very much for participating. Number two, contestant number one, insurance. Insurance, I-N-S-U-R-A-N-C-E. Contestant number three. President. President. P R E S I D E N T. Okay. 
Round three, contestant number one. This word has a homonym. Blight. Can you use that in a sentence? Bethany curfew was a blight on her plan to camp out all night with her friends to watch the meteor shower. Blight. B L I G H T. Contestant number three. This word has a near homonym. Devout. Can you use it in a sentence? Nate is a devout man who attends church every Sunday and sings in the church choir. Devout. D E V O U T. Round four. Contestant number one. This word has a near homonym. Oregon. Can you use that in a sentence? It is reported that Oregon is home to the largest organism in the world, which is a fungus that runs underneath nearly nine kilometers of a national forest. Oregon. O, capital O, R, E, G, O, N. Contestant number three. Mechanic. Lily and her fellow mechanics love working on their antique cars together. Mechanic, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-C. Mechanics. Bipolar. 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 B I P O L A R. Contestant number one, round five. Just one moment. Contestant number one. Carrot. Carrot. This is a homonym. The um, wording here is Caitlin preferred to get her vegetables through eating things like carrot cake. Carrot. C A R R O T. That's the number three. Scooter.
Contestant number one. Mr. Can you use that in a sentence? Hey, mister, Natalie asks, would you like to buy some cookies? Mister, M-I-S-T-E-R, mister. Contestant number four, uh, three, sorry. Eggplant. Uh, number seven, group, um, round number seven, contestant number one. This word has a homonym. The word is locker. Locker. Can you use that in a sentence? Thun kept all his belongings in the locker at the foot of his bed. Locker. Locker. L-O-C-K-E-R. Locker. Contestant number three. This word has a homonym. The word is tennis. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Trudy plays tennis twice a week and competes in double tournaments with her brother on weekends. Tennis, T-E-N-N-I-S. Round eight. Contestant number one. This word has a near homonym. The word is badger. 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 B A D G E R. Contestant number three. This word has a near homonym. The word is purse. The word is purse. Purse. P U R S E. Round nine. Contestant number one. Joyful. 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 J O Y F U L. Joyful. Contestant number three. Cabbage. Cabbage. Round 10, contestant number one. Coffee, coffee. Coffee, 
We have our winner, contestant number three. Let's give our super spellers another round of applause. Uh, we are so, so very, very proud of our super spellers from, from Hale County Schools. And we know that you guys have spent a lot of time working really hard getting ready for this competition. And we look forward to our student, our winner, uh, representing us uh, at the next level of this competition. So at this time, we would like to present our awards uh, to our winner, Ms. Briley from Hale County Middle School. She is declared our winner. Will you please stand, Briley? And our superintendent, Mr. Rhines, is going to present you with your winning trophy as well as your certificate and other little tokens that we have for you uh, from the Hale County Schools. Again, congratulations, Ms. Briley, for being the winner of our super spelling competition. Our second runner-up is going to be Mr. Avon from Greensboro Elementary School. Will you please stand? Let's give Mr. Avon a hand. He did an awesome job today as well. All right. Thank you. And finally, we have our little representative from Alexis from uh, Mountville Elementary School. She is our third place uh, winner. Please stand, Miss Alexis. And thank you so very, very much for being in our competition. You guys have represented your schools very well today. And I know that your principals and your classmates who are watching you, I think some of them may be watching live today, uh, are very, very proud of how you represented, represented your schools. Thank you. At this time, we will have our superintendent come forward and uh, say a few words to us. I want each of you to stand up so that we can applaud you all. I want all of you to stand. Let's hear what we're We are so proud of you. You all are women. So don't walk away here with your heads down. You are all are women. Remember that, okay? Unfortunately, we just had to have one person to represent Hale County. But remember, you are all women, and we are so proud of you. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on. We didn't know if we were going to be able to make it happen. Um, we hope we didn't provide too much of, of distraction, but we're just trying to, um, you know, be safe. You know, we, we do thank you for all that you've done. I know you were a little nervous. Um, you got a little frustrated, but, you know, you overcame that. And see, and that's what it's all about. You know, you may not have been first place this time, but you can overcome that. You still have all the opportunity. So don't walk away with your head down. Just, you know, say it wasn't meant for me today, but I'm coming back strong the next time. It's all about you. Depends on what you want to do. But don't give up. 
we just like to say we thank everybody for um, coming out, the principals, the parents, the judges, um, the central office workers, um, everybody that makes up this team. Uh, we're proud. We're happy. We're glad we got this done the way we wanted to do, wanted to get it done. You know, last year when we stood here, we said we were going to make this a big thing. We were going to fill the seats so that we can kind of replicate how they would do it at the state. Well, a long time the pandemic. But, you know, I can say we were still able to get people here. You were still able to get on the big stage. You were still able to feel that nervousness that you would feel when you represent us. So I think it still worked out overall. Uh, we do appreciate everything. Hey, nothing to be sad about. Nothing to be sad about. We had, uh, it was very competitive. How many rounds did we go? 11 rounds? 11 rounds. Man, I'm glad I wasn't on this day. I was nervous just walking out there wiping the mic off. But I do want to thank you all, too, because you helped me get some exercise today. I needed it. I should have, I should have walked in between every, every person. I would have gotten my counts up. So um, we do appreciate everything. We are so proud of you. Hey, you represent your schools well, and I know you're going to represent here at County well. That's all I need to say. Thank you for participating. Because a lot of people wouldn't have done this. And a lot of people would have used the pandemic to not do this. But you did it. So you all are winners. Go back to your school with your head, your head up high. No matter what people might say, you're still the winner. Because they are at the school, but you are right here. Still the winner. Congratulations. Y'all stay safe, and God bless you.